place. And uh, it's becoming very popular. Uh, in Florida, I've, I've observed them picking sweet corn, field packing, bringing it to the shed and slush icing it to cool it down, take the field heat out. They slush ice it, move it into the cooler, and when, before it's ready to ship, they slush ice it again. And uh, that's how they extract the field heat. Very important to get that out quickly. Those are some of the things that need to be considered because they will react on the type of package you come up with. Talking about what the package should withstand, I think T. Downs was talking about coatings and various things, and I'll just cover these very quickly. It, this may be in the handout too, I'm not sure. What we're doing very quickly here is considering cascaded board, which is a saturated, if you're not familiar with it, it's totally saturated. Actually has about 43 to 47% of wax pickup. I'll discuss that a little later. We're looking at impregnated and coated. It's a low level wax impregnation. It can be done to the mediums of the board or to the liners. It's generally, a, its weight generally is about seven pounds per thousand square feet of liner, medium or liner. Coating is generally curtain coated in that type of a situation. And uh, I think that top peach box is curtain coated if you're not familiar, but it's a, it's a layer of uh, a blend of polyethylene and wax that's laid on top of the sheet. Next one is low level wax and pregnant. I just described that seven pounds per thousand square feet, but without any coating on the outside. Next one is curtain coating. That's the outside coating, but nothing on the inside. And last is just comparing it to regular corrugated board. All of these had waterproof adhesives in the test, but I just want you to see what happens. All of them are conditioned the same. What happens after one hour of spray? A box sitting out in the rain, if you will. You're picking in a dry box in the field, and it starts to rain, and your crew goes in and leaves the boxes out in the field. What box should you have? Cascading may be an overkill in this situation because there's no change in let me explain. Short column crush is a means of measuring the compression. I won't go into how that's done, but it's short column because they take one inch high piece of board. But it relates to compression or stacking strength of the box that you're going to end up with. So it's a, it's a means of comparing different things. <clears throat> so the short column pounds, about 90 pounds, cascading didn't change after one hour of spray in a shower. Impregnated and coated, it's curtain coated in low level wax, dropped on just below 80 to probably about 70, uh, 65 maybe. Low level wax without a coating dropped from just below 80 to just below 60, lost about 20 pounds. Low level wax is generally in the liner, not on the outside surface. So what it allowed it to do was water was being soaked up by the fibers, but it wasn't deteriorating like a normal piece of board would. Um, curtain coating, Again, it's an outside coating, a very hard coating on the outside, and it sheds water very well. As this diagram shows you, it held up fairly well in, in a shower. The regular corrugated board, as you might, might imagine, there's nothing left of it when you leave it out in the rain for an hour. It just falls apart. Look at what happens in immersion. Now here, it's very evident you're gonna want cascaded board, and that's what we talk about when we talk hydrocooling in the box. That's immersion. That water is flowing through that box in some cases for an hour if you, if you do pallet loads. But otherwise it's being flushed with liquid water and you're gonna need cascaded board. It's the only one that survives. All the other ones basically have the same effect when you immerse them in, wa immerse them in water. Last but not least, and T. Downs talked about this too. This is the effect of low temperature, high humidity on corrugated board. Low temperature being 35 degrees in this case humidity being 95%. Look what happens to your other, other than cascaded, they all have a drop off. Humidity does affect the compression strength of board, uh, curtain coating, some of these will fight off humidity to a certain extent, but they're all gonna fail eventually. That line keeps going out and they're all gonna fail. Cascaded board, on the other hand, because it is a wax blend, in a cool condition, it gets very hard, and it gets very stiff, and the compression is improved. So in a cool condition, cold water, uh, cold storage, cascading actually improves from it would, what it would be at 72 degrees. That's the comparison. 72 and 50% humidity to 35, 95% humidity, it improves. So that's why you use it where you're top icing. That's why you use it when you're hydrocooling. 
uh, top icing just keeps that cascading nice and cold. And as long as it stays cold, it's going to have a good compression strength, provided it's palletized and everything else. But we'll get into that. By the way, if there's questions, shout out, because I'm going to run through here otherwise, and we might miss something. OK. <clears throat> In the process of casting, your flutes are sealed on one end. It depends how it's done. How it goes through the machine. Is right. there a, a preference or better if that is done to the lid of the box or the bottom of the box? OK, I'm going to answer that. Sounds like I'm hedging it, but I'm going to answer it in two ways. If you're hydrocooling and you're hydrocooling with the flaps open, top flaps open, you want the top edge sealed so you're not getting water down in the flutes. <laughs> because otherwise it's going to get in the flutes and have no way to get out the bottom if you seal the bottom, right? So if you're hydrocooling and you have your flaps up during a flushing with hydrocooling, you're going to want the top edge sealed. In our machine, it goes through our machine upside down. That's not your problem, that's ours. We need to know, though. On the other hand, if the box is going to stand in water, it's going to be top iced once it's loaded, and then the chance of the bottom box just standing in water because all this water's melting and running down through, all this ice is melting and running down through. Then you want your bottom flaps sealed so that the water can't get back in the flutes as the, as the flaps sit in water. We've got water on the floor. Okay. Okay, if it's not sitting in water. So I asked you this year to do it the other way around. Okay. There's one other advantage to doing the bottom. In a wax, and I'll show you what cascading does, the cascaded sheet is run through standing on edge. The hot wax flows down into the flutes and flushes out the bottom. It goes through an air knife and it drives the wax out of the flutes. You want to remove it from the flutes as much as you can. What's left is there's wax in the bottom edge. It hasn't driven it all out, but it's drained down to the point and then it solidifies and that's the end of the process. What happens as you might imagine, your wax pickup, if I cut a piece of a flap off here and weighed it, because we go by weight of wax pickup to dry board, cut one off the top flap and I cut one off the bottom flap, I might have 40% weight by pickup near the top edge. I might have 60% weight pickup near the bottom edge. And that's the whole depth of the box. It slowly comes up to that 40. What that does, it means that the bottom of your box is the strongest part, the one with the wax, because of this situation. It's going to be harder. It's got more wax in it. So all other things being the same, I'd say you'd want it in the bottom just for compressive strength. Unless you have one of these other situations where you're hydrocooling or it's actually sitting in water. Well, sitting water would still be there. Um, you had it in the bottom before. Now they're doing it in the top. I was thinking that was the way. Anyway, we asked to reverse it okay. this year. I don't Try it. I'd have to go back home and yeah. check. What I would what I would normally do, I'd look at how your box is being used at your place, depending where it's failing or whatever. Was that at your location or when it arrived at the other end or don't know? Oh wow. Oh wow. Maybe Maybe didn't have enough wax pickup. See yeah, that's another thing. Uh, there's two processes while we're talking about there's two processes of, of wax impregnated if you will. One is a dipping method where they just take a cage of boxes, a wire cage, all these boxes are in it, and they lower it into a vat of hot wax. And when all the bubbles start com stop coming up from the air in these flutes, they take it out and they let it drain. And it just drains till it solidifies. There's not a whole lot of control <laughs> in that. If you've got a cold temperature out in the room that day, it's going to solidify quicker than if it's 95 degrees in the summertime when you're making boxes. So it's, it's going to vary from run to run drastically. In the cascading method, oh, let's go on. I think I got to, we can skip that. You know what? A, here's a cascader. Boxes are fed in in the flat. Hot wax is poured down through. Air knife drives the excess wax out. The boxes are cooled and come off the end. We can control the wax pickup by a couple of things. The speed of the belt going through the amount of air knife, the time in the air knife, and the cooling speed on the other end. If we, want, if we want more wax to stay in the box, we get through the air knife very quickly, and we cool it very quickly. If we want what we call a dry cascading, where we try and get most of the surface wax off, I wish I had a sample of that, and I don't, but you can't really take your thumbnail and take wax off the outside. We call a dry surface cascading. We would 
want to heat that, take it slow through the tail end of this machine so we drive a lot of that wax out, maybe get down to 42, 43% wax pickup. When I talk about wax pickup, and you can hear our salesmen as well as other people talk about wax pickup, we're talking about if we weighed this blank on this end when it was dry, before it was cascading, when it came off the other end, we weighed it again, that difference would be 43 to 47% by weight increase. Very simple way to do it. So if you know what your dry box weighs, you can weigh your cascaded box and you can tell if you're getting 43, 47, 50% wax pickup. In a cold condition, it's important to have a high wax pickup because wax adds compression strength, okay? Benefits you get from cascading. Basically, you double the stacking strength over dry board, the same material um, in, in a cool condition, not in 95 degrees. Get a high moisture resistance, so any place you have liquid water, top icing, you want cascading. It improves bulge. Uh, let me see if I've got another slide. Yes. Beam stiffness is related to bulge on a container. And um, this may not be a good one to use, but if we can keep this container from bulging in the side, we improve its compression strength. I can tell you, as long as we can keep that wall of the container straight up and down, the box isn't going to fail. It may sag in the top a little bit and sag in the bottom, but it won't just break down. Breakdown happens when we get bulge, and when it reaches a certain point, it's going to crack, and you've all seen it. You get this smiley or frowning face kind of crack, half moon face. It's because it was bulging out, and it finally just snapped, and you got that from corner to corner break. So if we can keep the bulge down, we improve the stacking strength of any box. What this is doing, your beam stiffness, in cascaded, your beam stiffness has been improved 80%. We're controlling the bulge of a dry box to a cascaded box by 80%, so we improve stacking. The other color is the across flutes, with flutes type of thing. They all related in top to bottom compression. Column crush is improved by 50%. Actually, it's about the pickup of wax, percentage-wise. We're talking here. We're talking about a 45% wax pickup. We increase the compression column, short column crush by about 50%. So it's about equal to the amount of wax pickup is your improvement in compression. Torsion tear, practically no change at all. Cascaded box with top ice, top ice cabbage in it. You all are aware of what that is. I'm sorry I had to run out and pick up my cohort this morning. I missed the ventilation situation or session. But in the work I've done, this becomes more and more a real problem, the ventilation maintaining the temperature of the produce. And I interesting story is we had a, a salesman go out to a customer, and the customer said, I need more holes in my box. So the salesman came back and we put more holes in the box and the box failed. What the guy was really saying is, I need more ventilation in my box. He didn't say hole, he said holes, what he meant was ventilation. There's ways to get ventilation without destroying the box. And whether it be holes or slots, and I, I have a theory on that, I'd rather see slots. It destroys less of the flute construction in a box. And most of these are slots to some extent. But to get the same area of ventilation, the hole would have to be a bigger, wider flute, and I destroy more of my flutes. And when I destroy flutes, I lose compression. Location, where and when to use slots, and location of same. I'll talk to you a little later about compression. I think Theo mentioned this too, T. Downs mentioned. 60% of your compression of any container is within four inches of each corner, okay? So four inches somewhere in over there, right? That's 60% of your compression strength in every one of those corners. What have I done? I've taken two inches out of there. I've just destroyed two inches of my 60% of my compression. If I'd have put that slot there and there, I'd have maintained my 60% compression. Don't let your box supplier put the slots in the wrong place. Yeah. Keep them away from that four inch structure. This is our box. That's, and I see this sort of thing, and I say, what are we doing, guys? 
customer request. We're going to make what you want. If I'm a salesman, come in and you say, here's the box I want you to hand me this, you're going to get just that box. Because if we deviate, you may say, hey, slot's in the wrong place. I don't want those. That thing gets just really, somebody just decides we ought to have a slot there. I don't know. What's, what's this? Uh, potatoes. I can't imagine that it would make any difference to the ventilation of a potato if that slot was there or there. Absolutely wouldn't make any difference. Okay? On the other hand, this is probably not a good good example. Here, this is probably a bad one. Van Buren, you're probably familiar with this guy, right? That's good. That's he's close to the four inch. He's getting to the outside extreme of it, and uh, he's got a ventilation hole and a drain hole type here. He's got some ventilation from the top. Nothing in the end. So he's maintained pretty good structural strength on that box in the corners. Hand hole uh, really destroys the compression. That air right there is gone anyway, but that's your, that's your 40%. So that's, don't put the hand hole in the corner. Yeah? You have a, that's a portion of the knife. The one you're setting yep. down is a portion of the knife, but it's eight Yep. Can we get to full 60% times eight instead of times four? Yeah, I've got a slide that'll show that. It, you get about 80% more compression.